What's going on, guys? What's going on? Get situated here. Get situated. What's everybody doing today? What time is it? Be 510 Central Time. How's everybody doing? What's up, RY? What's up, Boot Hill? Joe? How you guys doing today? Mickey, Kenmore, Wombats, what's going on, guys? I figured since I hadn't made any videos, I'd just jump on here real quick. Sitting out here in old Sunny Barstow. It's uh, it's 85 degrees out here right now. It's good weather. Mickey, I came back out on the road, brother. Man, it was windy yesterday. Um, what's up, Smurf? No, I haven't, Boot Hill. It was windy yesterday in Albuquerque. I stopped. I had to shut down early yesterday. And, uh, <laughs> Poppy. Um, yeah, I shut down early yesterday because of the wind. It was like 65 mile an hour gust. I don't have but 4,000 pounds. So... Heading towards Jersey. The better you than me, brother. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am not a Jersey fan at all. That whole East Coast over there, I'm just not a big fan of it. How's everybody been doing anyway? Hopefully everybody's been doing good. Shut this thing off. Brian, what's going on, buddy? Prime barely even sends me through Cali or anywhere out west for that matter. Yeah, if you're not a general, if you're not a team, you're not going to get out here with Prime. I don't know, man. I, you know, people I've been talking to or that are talking to me, um, hello, out of sight, out of mind, Miss Pam. Um, people have been telling me that Prime is – Making a lot of changes over there, so I don't know. I don't know what they got going on. Hope it don't bother you guys if I put my sunglasses on, man. There's like a glare off here bad. So, I mean, somebody will comment that it's rude. Uh, I get the same guy that comments every time it's rude. Man, I like it. I uh, I tell you one thing I don't, I don't miss from Prime and them other places is going – 64, 65 mile an hour, man. It's nice when you can get out there and fly by people. Um, it's real nice. But I get a hate comment every time I put sunglasses on. He, he, he sends me a message and tells me, um, hello, rice lady. He tells me how rude it is to wear sunglasses during a video or whatever. Shit, if the sun's out, it's going to put some damn sunglasses on. As far as Prime, I haven't heard any anything. Um, I know they're really talking pretty serious about this trucker strike deal. I, you know what they've they've said this deal several times throughout the last twenty years. Um, no, Joseph, I'm not. Um, but the problem is, is you got the mega carriers. Hello, Miss Missy. You got the mega carriers that are that control it everything and you're not going to get some individual that's driving for mega care to shut down because they're afraid of the repercussions or, or um whatever the case may be no i didn't make a video on that um hey edge what's going on buddy she finally lets you talk hey laramie um i don't know if it'll happen or not I actually saw a thing the other day. A guy's got 200 and, hey, Junior, um, got 273 trucks or something like that. And he said all all of his trucks will be stopped. So I don't know, man. Maybe they're going to be serious about it this time. The problem with it is this. Um, we have a very high potential of, of diesel fuel getting back up over $4 a gallon again. 
if that's the case, it's going to hurt a lot of individuals and it's going to put a lot of people out of business. Hey, Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Um, I was in Albuquerque yesterday and the lady in there told me that because of this COVID deal, they, the governor was shutting everything down in New Mexico, which, you know, it's going to hurt a lot of people. A lot of people like you and I that work every day for a living. People that have money, it's not going to hurt as much. But people that work every day for a living, it's going to affect majorly, you know. And I hope that doesn't – I appreciate that, Hale. Um, you know, I hope that doesn't take place. She told me that the restaurant over at TA in um, Albuquerque, they're shutting down. And next week, I think it was, they're going to be shut down. No place to get anything to eat out here. You know, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. Unless you want to eat a lot of roller dogs, you know. Um, I was in Illinois the other day. A subway in there was closed. So, I, you know, I don't know what it's, it's going to affect us out here on the road somehow or another, whether it be fuel prices or food or something. But it's going to affect us bad. It's a, it's a problem when... You know, you perfect example. So I stopped this morning. It was real early this morning. I was riding on, on 40. I stopped over in Winslow, Arizona. They got a McDonald's there at exit 253. Excuse me, in a big parking lot. And I stopped over in that parking lot and I thought, well, I'll just grab me something from the McDonald's over. I seen they had it shut down. I was going to grab me two pieces of sausages and two eggs, right? So I get on them. I download the McDonald's app, and I order the food. So I go up to the door, knock on the door. The guy doesn't come. So he says, come around to the drive-thru. So I go around to the drive-thru. I, I left my phone in my truck. I already had the number, right? So I tell him what the number is. He said, well, I didn't realize you were on foot. I can't serve you. I said, well, I can't get a truck through the drive-thru. And he said, well, I don't know what to tell you then, but I can't serve you if you're on foot. And I thought, this is going to be a real issue. You're going to catch some fat bastard on an off day when he's starving to death. Um... Hey, Jesse. And he's going to drive the damn truck through the drive through just so he can get him a damn cheeseburger. But if we can't get nothing because we can't get through the drive through if the restaurants are shutting down in the TAs and the, and the Petros, and now some of the subways and stuff are shutting down, what are we going to eat? You need to think about that. Because everybody's worried about this COVID, COVID, COVID. I can't remember to wear a mask. So I had to get me one of these damn things because I'm not smart enough to remember to wear a mask. Where you put over on your, you wear it on your neck and you just yank it up over your face real quick. Because inevitably, I'll get out of the truck and get all the way to the door and there I go, oh, I don't have a mask. It's just not how our generation was brought up, you know, to have to wear a mask all the time. It's just a new thing now. I mean, people these days don't even think nothing about it. The younger generation doesn't even think anything about wearing a damn mask. I tell you, though, we got some serious issues on the horizon. Serious issues on the horizon. You know, people can vote for who they vote for, and I mean, everybody knew where I stood on it, and that's fine. But I think sometimes you got to look past the individual and look in. Um, 
look at the policies and procedures that they're going to put out. And I don't think, and not because I don't like him, I'm being, I'm being real here. I don't think that the people that voted for Biden just because they hated Trump understand the repercussions of the things that are fixing to take place. The man already been on record say he doesn't like fracking. Fracking, you know, fossil fuels, trucking, hello, it all goes hand in hand together. Yeah, it is, Boot Hill, and it's a shame, you know. I'm going to tell you something about this Obamacare, by the way, too. So, just for shits and giggles... I get on there the other day, right? And I look for for some insurance. Um, and I found some on the Obamacare, the the health health dot gov or whatever. Um, so. I clicked on it and I'm looking at it and it says, find a doctor in your area. So I click on there, 20 mile range, not a 50 mile range, not a a hundred mile range, not a, there ain't a damn doctor anywhere in sight. You know, it, the, the chart went all the way up to 200 miles. And there wasn't a doctor within 200 miles that I could go to with that plan right there. So I don't know how that's beneficial to anybody to have some insurance if you can't even go to where you by where you live to have it. And of course, you know you make too much money, so you got to pay an arm and a leg for it. It's a shame. The everyday working people. Um, We're, we're gonna we're gonna be hosed, man. We we're gonna be really hosed. I, I do believe. Did anybody? And I'm asking. I'm not trying to be a smart ass. Did anybody benefit from the Obamacare? I, I mean, I honestly, I want to know for real if anybody did benefit from it, because everybody I talked to, they couldn't find a doctor either. Swade ain't a good person. She's good. To, when her and Richard come and pick me up for that meal, I told you guys I had to open the door so she crawled in there like a damn dog in the back. That's the funniest damn thing to me. That's what's going to happen, Al Rod. That's exactly what's going to happen. Guys, all you you guys may as well get ready for that. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna claim that damn Biden incompetent. Kamala Harris is gonna be the president. She said it several times on her uh, on her tour. I'm not bashing anything, I, and I'm not bashing anybody if your views are different than mine. I'm just asking for real, Did anybody has anybody benefited from it? Because everybody I've talked to, I've never heard of anybody say they've benefited from it. And I'm, that's why I'm asking an honest opinion on it. You know, I don't, I don't know. An hour and a half. Well, that's what, I mean, just like Alrod said right there. I'll tell you what's good. It's exactly what's going to happen. She's already said it. The first woman president in history, Kamala Harris. Now, I'm parked at the, I'm parked at the pilot over here, Ryan. Tell them to come on over here and say hi. 
I got over here early, man. I don't deliver till three o'clock tomorrow afternoon in Mir Loma. So I'm like, you know what? I get over here to pilot, give me a good little parking spot over here. I, generally speaking, to be truthful with you, I would generally go to the TA so that I could go in the restaurant and get a normal meal like a normal human being every once in a while. You know, as truck drivers, even though we're out here and we live in these trucks, we do like to eat normal meals every once in a while. We like to sit down at a table and have a normal meal like everybody else, contrary to popular belief. But now we can't sit down and have a normal meal. Hey, Captain Banana, how are you, buddy? I've lost a little. Thank you. $900 a month for insurance and works for the state of Texas. If you guys would, please hit the old thumbs up button, too, by the way. Thank you. It's a shame, man. I think, I think we're really going to be hurting. You know, um, there's few things in life out here. I was telling Jessica this. Um, that's a good job, brother. I was telling Jessica this yesterday. You know, you've got to. Um, I said, you better stock up on some food. What's up, Patrick? How you doing, buddy? Because you don't really know what the hell is going to go on here. Even if if this strike doesn't go through, like, I don't think it will. But who knows, man? I mean, there's that many people getting behind it. Um, if it were to go through, people say, well, it's only three days, the 26th to the 29th. Well, I hate to tell you this, but three days without trucks moving – Put a, had a, I don't know if it would cripple the country, but it damn sure put a, a big old dent in somebody's deal, you know. What would happen is this. If people really thought it was going to happen, you remember when all this pandemic stuff and, all, and the lines at the gas stations were lined up down the deal, you know, they were running out of gas because people were getting all this fuel or, or gas, you know, and then the, the grocery store shelves were just bare, couldn't get anything off of it. That's what would happen. People would go absolutely insane and stock up on 90 million rolls of toilet paper again. Um, so see, Jesse's talking about no toilet paper and paper towels right there. People would jam up on that toilet paper and paper towels again. Nobody would have any butt wipe. Hey, congrats, Patrick. The working class people that try to pay house payments and and car payments and live will face to be hosed bad. Now, if you're one of those that draws welfare and um, gets a check every month, well, you're probably going to be tickled to death with this decision that we're paying for for you. So if that's you, then, you know, you can thank us all. We'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. We got you. And I don't say that rudely. I say that if a person needs it, they need it. So be it. But the ones that are capable of doing things that abuse it, it's a damn shame. For those of you also, while I've got you on this deal here, for those of you also that haven't subscribed to my other channel over there, if you would please put it up on there right now. I'm just kind of sickened at the way it is, man. Now, listen, I'm, I'm about to break something off on you real quick here. When you take God 
out of the country. And I'm not trying to be a religious freak or anything like that. Let's just be real about life. When you take God out of schools and out of things that matter in life, this is the chaos that you get right here. It becomes a society where it's okay to go around hitting old people and robbing and stealing and just doing basically whatever you want to do. Because back in our day, us older people, you'd have done some nonsense like that, man. They'd have knocked your block off your, your freaking shoulders. I promise you. Your parents or somebody else's parents. Wouldn't be none of this nonsense going on. These kids today, man, they don't have any concept about life, God, respect, anything. I promise you. See, Miss Pam knows what I'm talking about right there. Either you act like that, you better go get a switch, and it better be a good one. Because if you don't get the right one, they're going to go get it for you. That's what happens when you take God out of country. You got love in your heart. You can't have hate in your heart. You got hate in your heart. You can't have no love in your heart. Yes, Roland, I did. These little old thugs think this is the way to go. They wrong. Promise you that right now. What's going to happen? They're going to run across some old ass people. And they're going to get the wrong one. They don't mess with the wrong old people. Perfect example. Yesterday I was watching a guy over. What's up, Nunya? How you doing, buddy? I was watching a guy over change a windshield for another driver yesterday. They parked right beside me. A guy leaned, put his hand up. He had a big old, big old piece on his side there with an extra clip. I thought, damn, now the window changing guy, he's even packing heat, you know. You just don't know anymore, man. And if you're out here on this road, you better be careful. You better be careful. Because they don't care who you are. And let me give you a little news flash here. What's up, the trucker's life? Let me give you guys a little news flash here. Uh, it ain't a race thing. Then people don't care who you are, what color you are, any other damn thing like that. They don't care. They're all about their self. And you know, I know not all these kids had to be brought up bad. What's up, Josh the Vegan? How you doing, buddy? Tell you, man, he's uh... Here's the thing. The bad thing about it. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, when Black Lives Matter first came out, the original Black Lives Matter, the movement and what they stood for was proper. But what happens is you, you start getting offsets of that and then Antifa and you start getting different offsets of it and it keeps going and going and going. Until now, you don't know who's the real ones and who's not or or um and it's not just Black Lives Matter. I'm just using them as an example because they've been so, um, they've grown so fast. But the original movement had a purpose and a goal. And then everybody's like, like Pam just said, they jump on the bandwagon and they take the good part of it out and they put their own little versions in to where now, you know, it's, the original people, who are the original people? Does that make sense to you? If 
I don't know. I guess I, I don't understand what I'm trying to say, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. But um, so now the the good part of it, nobody looks at the good part of it anymore because of the jackasses that have have ruined it and then did all the bad things, you know, um, have taken away from the good part of everything. It's a shame. You can't even buy no ammo right now, man. It gets hard to even get. Trust me, I've tried to look online to buy some. You can't even hardly get any offline. There's a there's a weight on it. It's not a, necessarily about the buying the ammo, man. It's about the people. Here's another news flash for you, and then. Again, if somebody disagrees, pipe up and say something. Just because I'm the one talking doesn't mean I can't read. The government is behind all this bullshit. If they can keep everybody in arms and fighting about everything, then it covers up the real problem. They don't want people to get along with each other because then... They can come together and unite and look at what the real issue is. They don't want that. They want to keep everybody in arms with each other, you know. I got a lot of uh, a lot of friends of of all colors, and. If you're friends with somebody, you're friends with somebody. It doesn't matter. You're not looking, okay, well, they're black or they're white or they're Hispanic or whatever like that. But the government, the government says, okay, okay, Chad, uh, you can't like these people and these people can't like you. Bullshit. And the people buy into that, man. They get so brainwashed with it that they buy into it. And it's, and that's that's some of the problems that we have right now. And that's, it's only going to get worse. The divide, okay, think about this. The divide came when you can't even get the people in the office, in the White House, not the White House, but when you can't even get the people in Senate and, and all them people to get along, they're fighting against each other because one's a Republican, one's a Democrat. whoop de damn do Since when is it okay to... to beat the hell out of somebody because you're a Democrat or Republican. Really? But they keep so focused on all that shit up there in the where they make all the decisions for you and I. As those people draw a check, they work four years and they get a check for the rest of their life. Just so you know, a retirement check. But if you and I worked four years and got a check for the rest of our life, we'd be set, wouldn't we? But we don't. So they just say, well, we'll just keep fighting and keep everybody divided and keep everybody going. And it takes the heat off of us. And, hey, we just sit up here and get rich. How does an individual, before they get into office... We'll just use Joe Biden for an example because he's going to be the next president. Um, make a salary of three hundred seventy-one thousand or something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood, one year, and then go to be in worth like seventeen million the next year. Do you see a problem with that? Look at the Clintons, for example. Look at how much money they made off of. Big business. That's all it is, is big business. Hey, Brandon, how you doing, buddy? 
who pads whose pocket the most. That's where that's what side I'll go on right there. But in the meantime, we got to keep everybody hating each other now. We can't, nobody can get along. We got to keep them all hating each other. That way we can keep getting richer up here. It's a damn shame. People need to wake up and realize it. First thing people need to do is get back in church. May not be a bad thing for you. And listen, I cuss. I'm not, I'll be the first to tell you I cuss and carry on. But you can still believe and have a foul mouth. That, you know, it doesn't make it right, but that's the way it is. But let me tell you something. You better believe in something. And if you don't believe, if you don't believe in, in something, what do you have to go off of, right? I had told a guy one time, he said, I don't believe in God. I said, well, let me ask you a question then. I said, uh, what day is it? And we'll just go to, we'll just use today's date, for example. It's November 15, 2020, right? Yeah. Obviously, 2020 years ago, something big must have happened because we're all counting time by it still, right? Just saying. If nothing big happened, then why are we all counting time by it? Am I wrong or am I right? And I'm not trying to get off on no preaching deal here, but whether you're whether you're a whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, you're still counting time by it every day. So obviously, 20, 2020 years ago, something big must have happened because we're all keeping track of the date and counting time by it. Just saying. That's my opinion. said, I never looked at it that way. I said, well, maybe you should. I just put my, my other channel up there again so that for those of you that just joined us here, if you want to go subscribe to that channel, it would be appreciated. Um, i tell you right now, when I was young, a young child, there were, yeah, See, it's rude I'm wearing sunglasses. I knew it. I think entertainment will start back up. There's uh there's some things that are in the um in the works as far as like that Fortnite deal, that'll go for sure. They've already got it all set up where they're gonna petition those people off and and um you know, they play them games and shit. I think the, uh, I think the, the rich folks, these entertainers have enough, enough money and pool that they can, you know, they got to make some money too. So, yeah, I think entertainment will fire back up. It may not fire up right after the first of the year like they're planning on it, but I think it'll go by probably March or April anyway. They're talking about now um, one of the Biden administration people said on said yesterday on the news that they're planning on trying to do maybe a four- to six-week shutdown again. Well, for the businesses that haven't even recovered from the first one. Um, that's going to put them out of business. A lot of small mom and pop stores and, and stuff. And uh, there's also been some major retailers that have been affected by it that have went out of business, you know. And so, you know, it's a... Uh, 
Yeah, Delta, I was just talking about that a minute ago. So the, the truckers are talking about, it's called Stop the Tires, I believe it is. Um, if I'm wrong on that, let me know. Um, but it's called Stop the Tires, and they're talking about shutting down on November 26th to um, to the 29th. Perfect example right there, none you? You know, God delivers to restaurants. Now, none of you deliver to, to restaurants and nursing homes and schools and stuff like that. How big of a factor was it the first time that they shut down? What's up, buddy? Well, you was up here in he was up here in Barstow. And laid off four months. Damn, I've been here four hours too. Salt Lake City. Brandon, you driving over the road again or are you are you still work for the city and then just doing it on the side? The uh I appreciate that, Tracy. Yeah, for you guys that haven't subscribed to my new channel, please do that. Yeah, Brandon. I mean, you got to, man. That's the thing. Just like none of you there. He laid off for four. Uh, laid off for four months, man. You know, he can't afford it. I don't know his financial situation, and I'm not. You know, I don't. I don't know where he stands with it. But if he's like everybody else, he can't afford to be off work for for four months. Not very many people that I know of could be off for four months and still make it okay. Now, I ain't going to polish no damn wheels. I'll take it across the street over and let them do it. I don't blame you, brother. There you go, right there, don't you? I mean, it's. Listen, you guys better get something else going on the side. I'm going to tell you right now. You better find you a little side hustle, whatever it may be. I told old Brandon Balderas about my little side hustle. I ain't never heard nothing back from him. He don't. He don't reply back to me. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, Brandon. But you better find you a little side hustle. Make you some extra money. They shut this whole country down for four to six weeks again. Not going to be good. Yeah, we're still friends. I don't talk to him. I ain't talked to him in a long time. He's uh, doing his door dashing deal or whatever he's doing, Uber Eats or whatever. I haven't talked to him in quite a while. <laughs> oh, but he does. He got all these side. I was like, no, no, paying. Beer's booming. That's good, Captain Man. I'm going to tell you. Even Prime. Listen, I went by there last week, or maybe it was the beginning of this week. They had so many trucks sitting on that parking lot out there. Probably the most trucks I've ever seen sitting on that lot out there. Well, one thing about it, with this... With this pandemic there's going to be a lot of beer drinking and a lot of babies in nine months you can bet that a lot of beer drinking and a lot of babies neither of the two i'm participating in i promise you that right now but well, i'll be damned too bad, Junior. I wish I could have seen you, brother.
the uh There'll be an influx of these babies, though, in the next nine months to a year. You got that shit right, Brandon. The people going to drink regardless. It's about all they got anymore. But let me tell you, marijuana sales is booming, too. They got their little dispensaries up everywhere, man. Yeah, we will, Junior. Junior, I don't know if you subscribe to my other channel or not yet, but I wish you would if you didn't. Um... They got these old marijuana dispensers out there, and these people, these people are flocking to them things, man. I come through Oklahoma, and there was one off the the deal there, man. There's the only business it was like a whole storefront right there, shopping deal for nothing but that that uh, um, the marijuana. Um, putting it on there right now, Junior. Um, and man, there was cars lined up all around the damn building for that damn thing. Going in there, get them a little less smoky smoke. We as drivers, you're not allowed to do that. You better hope the hell you can start even eating here for long the way they keep shutting these damn restaurants down. Pisses me off, man. You go in there to get a damn roller dog, and they ain't even got no damn roller dogs available now. There's too many damn people going in there getting out, getting the roller dogs. Stock up on them groceries. I got you, Laramie. Well, and that's the thing. I don't think, you know, it's sad, but I don't think we're going to have, I think a lot of people aren't going to have any Christmas this year. And that's, that's a shame. And I think there's going to be a lot of kids that don't get anything for Christmas and not because their parents are bad, but I just, uh, they're trying to keep a roof over the head, you know? And, um, the, the waiters, the bartenders, like none you said, out of business. The um, even like Subway, like I said, I stopped in stopped in uh, Illinois the other day, and uh, Subway was closed, man. Yeah, reefer should stay busy. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see a reason why, why the refrigerator business should stay busy. I think trucking in general will stay moving, but if they do this shutdown, like they're talking about for four to six weeks, I'll tell you what it's going to affect. It's not going to affect the individual they can work from home because they're working from home. It's going to affect us out here <clears throat> and because now what happens to the the guy or the gal that works in the cold warehouse you see what I'm saying oh we can't have but so many people come in here well how that affects us is this you're going to have longer wait times to get loaded and unloaded because we're running on half staff or are they going to be working at all or, you know what I'm saying? Just things like that. No, and I don't think there will be. And I'm not talking about the, the trucker shutdown, Stephen. I'm talking about, you know, they're talking about shutting everything down again for four to six weeks because of the COVID deal. Uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday, what I was saying about it, Stephen, is yesterday on the news, one of Biden's uh, people in, in his cabinet said, that's one of the things they're really aiming towards or leaning towards is a four to six week shutdown for because of the COVID issues. As far as truckers striking, I don't think enough of them have enough balls to strike anymore. Uh,
Well, like I said, yesterday in Albert in Albuquerque, the lady told me, she said the restaurant was shutting down the following week. They were going to be closed again. They're only open on a part time basis now. And the governor of, of New Mexico has already said, hey, we're shutting we're shutting things down. She said this town, she said, I've lived here for 30 something years and this town's going to be a ghost town. People can't afford it. Have you, I don't know if you've been down there to the TA in Albuquerque lately. But just to get to that thing, looks like you're driving in skid row, man, because of all the homeless people laid up underneath the bridges and stuff. I, I never thought in 2020 with the society that we live in that there'd be that many damn homeless people, man, living down there. We can't even take care of people. And not only that, I'm going to take it one step further. What about all the homeless vets? They went over and served our country. Most of them are Vietnam veterans, might I add. Um, they go serve our country and come back to. Um, they come back to the bullshit that they come back to, and now a lot of them have have drug issues and stuff like that. You know, I don't I don't support very many organizations because I don't believe that. Um, you know, all the money goes to a lot of good places and stuff, but there's an organization that I do, I do support. And it's, it's the 22 a day deal. You know, there's 22 veterans a day, at least that, that commit suicide because they can't get any help. It's a damn shame. You send these 18 year old kids overseas to go fight. They see this stuff over and then you bring them back and then they can't, they can't get no help that they need to get their mind right again. I think the suicide rates are already increasing. You know, uh, people just can't handle the stress of it anymore. And then you think about it. Let's just be real in our life for a minute here. And let's talk real shit. You've got a, uh, just say a mom and a dad, you're the husband and you're working, you're working your ass off every day to try to keep a roof and food in the, in the kid's mouth. And it doesn't matter what you do. You can never get ahead on things. And some people, if they're not mentally strong, they can't handle that. And they think that the best way to, ha to handle that is to, uh, you know, just go ahead and commit suicide. Unfortunately, that's not the right way to do things, and it leaves your family in a burden. But I understand the stress. Where are you going to turn to for help? They want money, too. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm having a rough time. We'll go see a therapist. Well, guess what the therapist takes? They want money. Them bastards ain't working for free. I agree 100%, Noah. That's why I said the Vietnam vets actually had it the worst. They go home. They, they go over there and do what they've been told to do. Right, wrong, or indifferent. That's what they're told to do. They're following orders. And then half of them, uh, half of them are either on drugs, homeless, or, or both. And that's a proven fact. For doing what they were told to do by the government, and then the government doesn't even take care of them. That's a damn shame. They didn't have a choice when they were 18 to make a decision. They were told to go over and do that. Hell, these 18-year-olds nowadays, you can't even get them off the couch. They're too busy playing video games and shit. But that that that's, that's real stuff. Mine's all jacked up, and then... You know, can't go get no help nowhere. Hey, buddy, good night. Appreciate you jumping on here. You know, if you're able to and you've got money, help some people out, man. And I don't mean put yourself in a bind. But, you know, sometimes you got to do good shit for people.
Well, Buster, I appreciate your service. I really do. You know, uh, some people may not, but I, I do appreciate your service. And it's a shame that you guys had to go through that. Be called baby killers and being spit on and shit like that, man. That's a damn shame. 18-year-old kid just going over. Hell, there was people lying. They, they, they were people lying, you know, to get to go to war. 16-year-old kids, man, and were forging their birth certificates to be able to go over there and fight for our country. And to come home for this shit that they got now. I say that, you know, I'm talking about this because I just talked to a guy yesterday, a homeless man. And we talked about this exact same damn thing that I'm talking to you guys about right now. He, he was a Vietnam vet. And he's homeless. And uh, he's not an alcoholic. And he's not a, 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 you know, he's not a, he smelt of no alcohol. He was coherent as coherent could be. He just couldn't make ends meet, man. He can't, he, you know, what do you do? And he hadn't been homeless very long, but this pandemic deal, which all ties in together, this pandemic deal, he's one of them that it really took a toll on and he lost everything. I don't remember what job he said he did or whatever, but they laid it off and, and he's like none. Yeah, he was off for four to six months and he just he could not recover, man. You know, boom, there he's on the street living. You think about that. Oh, yeah, Dave. I mean, listen, they're going to have a vaccine out, I'm sure. And I don't know if they'll shut the country down or not. I'm not getting too worked up about it, but I'm saying... The part that I'm talking about is the effect that it's having on people in general from the last time. And that we cannot, uh, There's no argument on that because it may not have affected you, but it affected many others. Now, whether they do shut down or they don't, that's not, not on me, and I don't have any damn clue about it. But the effect that the initial shutdown had, there's no denying on that part of it. And it, because it's still happening to people, and it's still affecting people. Some of them on here, like Nunya. Breadwinner in his house, off four to six weeks or four to six months. Michael, I'm doing fine, buddy. I think you're the only one that calls me that, by the way. TJ Jones, the bull of the woods, chilling with Chad. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Boom. There's my channel. The other channel I have, again, I put it up there. If you want to go subscribe, do. If you don't, that's great, too. It's up to you. You're the boss of it, of your finger. See? Look here. I'm trying to... Yes. Yes, sir. Would like to make a donation to my team your football team today? For your football team? How much are you? $5. I'm trying to get to San Diego. I'm trying to go... To... For what position you play? I play right back. Running back, you any good? Yeah, I'm good. How many TDs you scored? Huh? How many touchdowns you scored? Twenty-seven a game or less. That's good enough for our team. What you got there? Thank you. Look, I got dark chocolate. How much is that? Five dollars. Well, I just gave you five dollars. You say I thought you said how much? Is yeah, I want one of them. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was saying, do you want dark chocolate or do you want dark chocolate? No, no, that's good right here. Hey, good luck to you. Yep. 
trying to get they're trying to get some money for the football team to go to San Diego to play state or something, I guess. I don't know. See, hell, it happens right here. You just never know. While you're live on YouTube, somebody want to see that old that guy next to me. He run him off. He didn't even give him the time of day. A couple kids in football jerseys with candy bars and shit. I ain't going to eat the damn thing, but Elf ain't, you know what I mean? They got their jerseys on. Need a little help, man. They're trying to go to state. Can't get nobody to buy no damn chocolate off of them. See that they're hustling. Yeah, he gonna buy he gonna buy some. Hey none, you be safe out here, brother. I'm gonna jump off here as well. I'm gonna get off here and relax for the night. Everybody have a good night, man. You see what I'm talking about? I was just talking about somebody helping some damn body. And look, it comes around to me. You got to help somebody, I'm telling you. You just never know, man. Look here what I got out of it. Not that my fat ass can eat it. Look here. Fine Belgian chocolate, dark chocolate right there. Big ass, big ass candy bar, five damn dollars. I ain't worried about that damn candy bar. Anyway, everybody be safe out there. And um, well, Brandon Balderas is, is hitting me up there. Again, I'm going to put that that uh, channel on there. You go subscribe to it. I'd appreciate it. If not, great. Have a good night. Everybody be safe. And uh, we'll see you the next time around. Thank you, guys.